Hogan, but glorious. Hulk Hogan, Hollywood officer, whatever they call you, I'm coming after you, you coward. Hello and welcome to Broken But Glorious, I'm Chris Lapp and I'm delighted to be joined on the live by one of the busiest guys in Brit Rest, a former hardcore champion referee, James Greenwood. How are you doing this evening, James? Hello, yeah, I'm alright, thank you very much. Former hardcore champion, I forgot about that. <laughs> That's going to be my first question, <laughs> so, so huge thanks for joining us. Um, I just wanted to know, former Hope Wrestling hardcore champion, how did that come about? Um, it was a, a Rumble show. Yeah. Um, and I think the tile kept changing hands during the actual rumble. I was on the outside. Yeah. Uh, I saw an opportunity, jumped in the ring. Um, I gave, uh, Santos a sunset flip. He wouldn't go down. I think Jack Cave, I think Jack Cave knocked Santos down and I managed to get him down for a three count. Oh, amazing. <laughs> um, as soon as I got the belt, I picked it up, celebrated, and, uh, Drew Parker knocked me out from behind and took his belt back. Oh. So. <laughs> I know, it was great, great for all 10 seconds. I, I'm always going to go down the history books as a champion. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, just got to couldn't take it up and put it in the fridge, you know, for a photo, but you never yeah. know. Oh. Might get another chance one day. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. How the, I love how Kharkov 24-7 titles have come back into fashion in the last couple of years. So. <laughs> oh, so. definitely. I, I, it's something I always loved as a kid, um, watching, you know, the hardcore title. Yeah, you know, changing hands in the most bizarre places. Um, it's it's great, and I'll, to be honest, I know there's a lot of uproar. I can think when the twenty four seven title started in WWE, but I think it's brilliant. I think it's the best thing it's, on it's WWE at the moment. So. Uh, oh, definitely, yeah. It's, uh, it's so so creative. Um, I've been able to catch up on the last week or so what's happened, but I know it's changed hands a few times, so I have to uh, catch up on that one. Yeah, I think a, uh, a basketball player won it. I think this week. Oh, spoilers. No, I didn't prefer sure. to see it on okay. Twitter. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's great. Yeah, I know. It's never all. That's going to happen, do you? Yeah, an uh, executive from Fox won it a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> of course it's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, but that's it. Wrestling's unpredictable, you never know. I just um, saw, um, I was looking to go to Wales Comic Con in yeah. uh, December, buying tickets earlier on. I saw that our truth is going to be there, and I thought, you never know. There could be a 24 7 title change in Wales. If I go on my referee gear, you know, yeah. <laughs> everyone's got to be on the lookout then, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> right, so, you mentioned a bit about your history as a fan. So, when did when did you start watching wrestling? Oh, I was um, about nine, ten years old. Yeah. Uh, so, it was around 99. I um, started watching WCW with my dad uh, on a Friday evening. Yeah, and uh, I was just kind of taken away by the likes of Goldberg and DDP and Sting. I just thought it was absolutely brilliant. And I was like, you no know, time spent with my dad, and you know, it was always like on late nights, one about nine o'clock on a Friday, so I got to stay up a bit late. Yeah, oh, it was great. This I excuse to stay up, but I was just completely entranced by WCW, um, especially because most of people in my school watched WWF at the time. Yeah. No primary schools, but I didn't know anything about the WF guys because we didn't have Sky or the access to watch it, but we could all watch WCW. So uh, that's kind of where I started from. Yeah, definitely. Did you? Who was your favourite wrestler growing up? So. Oh, back then it's uh, Sting, Goldberg, and DDP, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've met two of them so far. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I just, I loved, I loved Goldberg, to be honest. But um, I think we're going to have a chance next year. Uh, yeah. For the love of wrestling in Liverpool, uh, Goldberg's been signed on for that. Yes, he's on, um, I think he's, so. He's there on the know. Sunday, I think. So. Uh, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. so that would be a uh, exciting. So I'll be there next year for taking part in some shows over the weekend. Is it T so, T yeah. and T are doing the wrestling this year, isn't it? T and T are on the Friday. Yeah, and uh, I'm pretty sure Future Shock have announced they'll be doing one of the days again as well. Oh, brilliant! Um, there's an event page, I think, on Facebook there, somewhere around there. So there'll be at least a couple of shows. And I, th I don't know if any other places possibly putting a show on as well. But, um, you know, if they do, 
uh, I'll be around. So we need a ref. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I interviewed Big Joe just before this year's for Love of Wrestling because he was dead excited. Cause oh yeah, he was wrestling him, um, Jim Duggan in a tag team match. Like he thing. was, yeah, <laughs> that was great. It's, it's so, so surreal though. Like obviously, a lot of people within wrestling start off as fans. Yeah, you know, well, almost everyone. Um, so for the chance for the likes of Big Joe, um, Damon Lee, Chris Egan. Tom Wolf, um, John McGregor, and Danny Hope think are all in that match. Yeah, and Pete the ref. So I've had the opportunity to work with the likes of Jim Duggan is just absolutely insane. Um, you know, Big Joe has also worked with uh, Hurricane Helms this year as well on a yes, match yeah. of Future Shock. And it's just it's fantastic getting a chance to work with people you watched as a kid. You know, at the end of the day, we're always going to be fans somewhat. Yeah, and I think that's good. Uh, you know, especially if you're still a fan of wrestling because then you still enjoy what you're doing as opposed to it just becoming another job. So did you get into the business wanting to be a ref or do you have ambitions of being a wrestler at one time? No, um, I've always wanted to be a ref. Um, I remember years ago I uh, spoke to a promoter and they were open for training school mm-hmm. and I said, oh, I want to be a referee and um, they said, I've got to come and train to be a wrestler. I was like, oh, well, I don't really fancy that because I was like built as a wrestler <laughs> and you know, uh, um, and at the time I didn't have access to transport I was working late shifts and things so I thought I couldn't actually make it to the training school anyway where I wanted to get to Yeah. Um, but then when uh, Fighting Spirit opened up two years ago uh, with Zach Gibson and James Drake on pretty much on my doorstep 10 minute drive got a car now I didn't work evenings I thought well, why wouldn't I go and give it a go mm-hmm. um, so I went down the first day with my girlfriend and uh, my brother and uh, we all kind of just went down to see what it was like. Oh, amazing. And I was hooked. Um, so I did, I did train with them, like, wrestling-wise as well, like, weekly for a year. Train a few other places as well, like Infinite. Um, so I know how to, like, wrestle relatively safely. Yeah. I'm not any good at it. <laughs> <laughs> not, not by a long shot. Um, but I know how to bump. I know how to, you know, run the ropes. I know how to... And, and I think it helps you as well because you can kind of understand how to position yourself as a referee better because you know which way kind of moves are going to go in yes yeah. you know especially in the the first the earlier part of my career where i was still obviously so new to it knowing just kind of what moves would go where you kind of know how to position yourself better until it becomes more natural um so yes i've always wanted to be a referee yeah and i told gibson drake that on the first day i said i want to be a ref went, okay and then when the when their first show came about, I'd asked them a few to force a D the ref, and they said, "Oh no, we'll get someone in for it." I was like, "Oh, fair enough." Then, um, and I'd been doing all the training matches at the school anyway. Yeah. And literally a couple of hours before the show, uh, Gibson said to me, "Do you want a ref tonight?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> so, so I drove home, uh, got a white shirt, got a bow tie. I didn't have a referee shirt at the time. No. Came back to school, ended up the air doing all the matches that night, which was great. So. I'm not sure if someone pulled out on the day or something and they were just kind of stuck a little bit, but, you know, it worked out best for me, so it was great. Yeah, cool. Was there something you learned during your training that you didn't realise was the part of the ref's job? Um, I know what you mean. Um, things I've learned in training. So I'd say a lot more so positioning-wise. I didn't realise, but now it seems completely obvious to me. Yeah. But I didn't realise that the referee's always kind of at the back of the ring. They never really come towards the front of the ring. Um, they were to, especially if you're film on the show with a hard cam facing you, mm-hmm. they'll kind of stay towards the back. Yeah. Um, and kind of just um, keep in touch more with the wrestlers and, you know, passing messages if you need to between, especially like tag teams and things, um, you know, those kind of matches and just making sure that everything flows throughout the match. I don't think I particularly knew about that aspect beforehand. Yeah, definitely. I, I probably did already just think, oh, I'm just counting one, two, three, four, you know, count to five, count to ten. <laughs> uh, that was kind of it. I didn't realize how stern I'd need to be. Um, I've been told best advice is to kind of be like a policeman. This is my ring and you're going to play by my rules. Oh, yeah. That's um, yeah, which is, I'm, I'm not particularly, I'd say, a, a threatening, you know, an intimidating person as such, but in the ring, you've got to kind of be a lot more in control and look but I think I'm a lot better than I was two years ago so yeah because you're, you're six foot four six foot five you're, t- you're 
Oh, we've got does, nothing does, at all. Uh, yeah, that's, it's because I work in the ring with Big Joe, and you know how huge he is, you see. <laughs> Definitely, you know, I, I'm, I'm about six foot, um, but a lot of the wrestlers in the UK are smaller than me. Yeah. Um, they're a lot bigger than me, like muscle height, but, um, you know, they are uh, smaller than me in stature, which makes it a bit trickier for me, so I'm trying to position myself sometimes in the ring of spread my legs a little bit more to look a bit more towards their height. Yeah. Um, so I'm not overpowering them as such. Um, but that is a kind of a negative I've unfortunately got against me. Can't really help the way <laughs> I've grown in my life, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I was told once, I think it was um, Leguero said to me, he said, in the US, I wouldn't look as tall because the wrestlers over there are all six foot five, six foot six, six foot seven. Yeah. Or more, aren't they? Um, so I'd look a bit, you know, Dwarfed over there, but unfortunately over here, I'm just seem to be taller, <laughs> just the way genetically the UK seems to be. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, what's some of the various ways you communicate with the wrestlers in the match during a match? Um, it's a lot. Of, so, just kind of making sure they're safe on moves and things. You know, checking down on them. Um, you know, sometimes you see a move and it looks a lot worse than it is. So, you'll often see a referee go down and just kind of check on, them, make sure. Give them a little squeeze, make sure there's lots of movement in the hands. Yeah. Um, you know, if it does go too far, just ending it right there and then, which luckily I'm not to do. Um, there been a couple of times where people have been a bit dazed, but, you know, they, 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 they're okay to carry on. And I know it's like within the, the, the match is coming towards the end of it. So, um, but, you know, if something happened at the start of the match, someone got knocked clean out, I just have to say, right, well, no, <laughs> you're not carrying on. So who, what, who was in the first match you refereed? <laughs> <laughs> Put me on the test now. I think it was James Drake and Sam Bailey. Wow, that's a, that's a great first match. <laughs> All around it, because it was the first night of Fighting Spirit. Yeah. And it was, I think, Sam Bailey, Sam Grad, no. Sam Bailey, James Drake, Oh, Screwface. Oh, wow. And um, yeah. and uh, Gibson in like a four-man tournament. Um, over the night, and I think it's either JD and Screwface or Bailey. Yeah, it was a great night though, because then the, then the night ended up being uh, Drake and Gibson. It was just really, really cool to be part of. That sounds amazing. <laughs> and obviously, they've done more right for themselves the last two years as well, haven't they? Oh, yeah, they're, 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 <laughs> their match at NXT UK last weekend was amazing. So was, the takeover match, yeah, yeah it was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, well, it would have been, would have been like match, match of the year candidates if then Walter and Bates didn't put on like the match of the year so far. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, so I read that your first outside booking from Fighting Spirit was the five star wrestling event. The yeah, yeah. Um, so that, what, that was that's a bit crazy. Um, that came about because I'd gone down to uh, Future Shock a couple of months beforehand. I've gone down to the shows and watched the shows and then tried to help out. Seen him on Facebook, never spoke to him. I never had him or anything like that, but he always popped up as a person you might know. I just came to him and said, oh, you Chris Sharp? He said, oh, yeah, man. And he's like, dead relaxed. And uh, we just like chatted said, oh, can I ask advice about referee? And he said, oh, I'm on Facebook. Hit me up any time. Um, so I did do set up a referee group on Facebook. Oh, wow. It's like WWE, um, Ring of Honor, Impact Referees, all that. And they've been offered advice and things like that. So, within that, uh, someone, every so often they say, like, let us know where you're from and where you're training and that. Um, so, I just commented on saying, I'm in Liverpool, been training for six months, so I've been working for X amount of time. And uh, Steve Linsky popped up. So, oh, you're in Liverpool, would you like to work on this five star show in Liverpool? Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think I ended up being, it was the first match on that night. Um, Oh. It was a dark, there were dark matches. There weren't. Yeah. It wasn't televised. But to be asked on the third of a show to be on a uh, a show in my the hometown arena in Liverpool Echo Arena was just utterly, utterly insane. Um, and the first match was uh, it was Justin Gabriel. So he's now um, PJ Black. PJ Black. Yeah, that's one. PJ Black. And uh, Tim Wiley. Yeah. Um, which is just, as I say, just utterly mad to, to think I've gone from 
not knowing a clue what I'm doing to essentially being filmed for TV, as I thought at the time, having production in my ear tell me what's going on with uh, cues for adverts and things, even though it was a dark match. Yeah. And it was just wow. <laughs> thrust on the deep end. But it was such an incredible experience to be given at the time. I had feedback from uh, Steve Linsky and Chris Roberts, who were there on the night as well. So it was great. So what's it like going from rest, um, referee in, a, in front of a couple of hundred people I'm getting stri- thrown straight into the deep end in front of an audience in the arena. Do you have to like add some or anything because you're on a bigger stage? Um, oh, to be honest, I think by the time I got there, I didn't actually have time because I come from um, work. No, um, I didn't actually have time to so actually go in and check out the arena before wow. the fans being let in as it was. Um, and I didn't realise how much bigger the ring was going to be. The ring's absolutely huge to use on TV. WWE ring 20 foot by 20 foot, but most people I think like so, yeah. 16 foot by I 16 foot. I think that's possibly what um, Pro Wrestling 5 so I use. Hmm. Um, but it was great because obviously there have been like a fighting spirit ring there's been an eight man tag match hmm. and there's just not enough space at all because it's, it's quite a small ring I think. It's, so to go to like a 20 foot by 20 foot ring and I thought wow it's just huge. <laughs> so it's just kind of I knew I could stay out of the way of the wrestlers and wouldn't be getting in the way as much which is great. Yeah. Um, so that was that was the kind of the main kind of difference for me, um, but I just remember like the map going dry because in that arena, and now my brother was in there watching and stuff as well. Wow. It was just crazy. <laughs> they, they had so, they had some huge names on the card, like obviously the likes of Ray Mysterio, Rob Van Dam, Carlito, and John Morrison. And yeah, I think Chris Masters might Chris have been Masters there. Was, all, the, all the big. It's eight, a shame the way it went down. Guys as well, yeah. Five pound a tick or something. If they would have done it at ten pound a tick, I think they would have. For the first show on TV, they could have packed that place out, and it would have looked amazing. Yeah, it was as... exciting. I was so excited every week. Like even the shows I couldn't get to. Yeah, just come out and watch it on TV. Um, like so, I did uh, the one in Sheffield as well, and I was literally scheduled to go to the Manchester tape in that week, um, and Bolton I think was the following week, or a couple of weeks after. Um, they stopped. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, oh, <laughs> it's gone. Which was, it was sad. It was, it was very ambitious, I think, for what it was. Yeah, I thought, I thought the Zach Gibson versus all the American guys was a great storyline, and I was looking forward to oh, seeing yeah. where that went. So, so. <laughs> so you took on like, that as well, like Zach Gibson's have that kind of opportunity as well, which was fantastic. Yeah, it's just brilliant. <laughs> so, what, was, what have been some of your favourite memories refereeing so far? Oh, God. Um, there's so many. I mean, the, the one that stands out, uh, my first night with Defiance, I've mentioned it a couple of times, um, but the first night of Defiance, I did a match with Jimmy Havoc and Haskins versus wow. Katie Ryan. And uh, basically, the, <laughs> the start of the match uh, didn't happen. The bell didn't ring, so we'd pull all the way around the arena and everything. And every time they wanted to start the match, I'd get unfortunately uh, knocked out <laughs> accidentally. So I got knocked out by an accidental uh, Haskins penalty kick. Yeah, I was down the floor, and then um, eventually they got me back in the ring and got me ready to start the match because Haskins and Havoc got the upper hand. They wanted to ring the bell. Mm-hmm. But then I think Chris Brooks had rolled out, so um, Jimmy Havoc just kicked me down low. Wow, me straight out again. But later on, um, Brooks pu- pulled me up. And Haskins did a suicide dive. So Brooks pulled me in the way and I took the suicide dive. It was just utterly, wonderfully, ridiculously brilliant. Um, I mean, it hurt, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the end of the match came where they rolled me in the ring. Um, Havoc went to kick me down low again. And I kicked him down low, rang the bell. He got rolled up and the bell finished straight away. Brilliant. Oh, oh brilliant. <laughs> This is the infamous Cameron Solis, and you're listening to Broken But Glorious. I say, my, 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 my favourite match I've seen with you was Jimmy Havoc versus Sammy Callahan in the Bob Wyatt That was Bath the next one I was going to say, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's such a great weekend, the wrestling media con. Oh, it was. I, I'm surprised not to again this year, to be honest, but media con last year was, I think, a great success. Um, they had the Rev Pro Super J show, didn't they? I think the British Super J Club. Yes, it was brilliant. Yeah. Um, they had uh, an NGW show, I think, one evening. Uh, they would have had an NWA title match, but um, Nick Hall lost the title the week before. It's Cody and um, All In. 
So you did the um, number one contenders match, didn't you? I did the number one contenders match between uh, Aldous and Doug Williams. Yeah. Definitely. Which was a little bit gutted about because it wasn't for the title. But um, I luckily got to do one of those title matches this year wow. with um, Crater a few months back at Pinfall. Um, so that was really cool. Um, but yeah, then, then being given the opportunity to referee an impact show and doing four main event matches or the second half of the show was just... You know, I've been doing refereeing just on a year at that point. Um, so that was just an incredibly wonderful opportunity. Um, got some good feedback from people across the board. Yeah. And I yeah, just really enjoyed that one. But yeah, the, the, um, the barbed wire, that match, it was just, you know, there's a point where Jimmy Abbott gets his shoes ripped off. Yeah. And there's pins all over the ring. And he goes to double stomp Callahan. And he rolls out the way and just double stomps the pins with yeah. his bare feet. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Horrendous. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know how he does. He makes a match look so brutal, but it's hilarious at the same time. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, he's a master. Yeah, well, I, yeah, WrestleMania. That was, well, I think, yeah, it was, it was exactly this time last year, wasn't it? So, yeah, I am. Um, I... Uh, yeah, it was. It was uh, this time yesterday. Yeah, so I. Yeah. Or last week, depending on when this. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I went. Uh, yeah, I, I went down on the Sunday and I did. I did interviews with Joe Hendry and Trevor Lee, Eddie. Oh, Edwards. fantastic! All the, all the impact guys, yeah. Yeah, oh, it was amazing. Uh, Eli Drake, he was amazing as well. And, like Adam Pichetti and uh, Al, um, Al Zane, oh, it was Brian Zane. Sorry, <laughs> it was so fun. And then uh, being a bit a bit drunk, drunk in the evening, just chatting to Rich Swan. Rich Swan, Tyson T Bone, then Ollie and Luke from WrestleTour, just chatting to them. Oh, from WrestleTour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so fun. So, so, yeah, I'm so glad it's not happening again this year. So, but, no. Because so the wrestlers well, just. We've got a couple of a wrestler now instead, haven't we? So, yeah. No, we can't make a play, I suppose. But the difference with that, um, at WrestleMedia Con, the wrestlers are just walking around, chatting to people, whereas at the level of yeah, wrestling, that's they've true. got the handles with them and they. You can't, you can't really go up to the wrestlers and talk to them. Cause you, you know, you meant to no, pay, not pay 20 quid to talk to them. <laughs> so that's the whole point of it. <laughs> so how did you get involved with uh, progress? Um, let's have a look. See, progress was the first of them November last year. I'm trying to remember what happened. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. So um, James Drake uh, messaged me. Yeah. Um, and he said uh, the progress management have asked him if they could get in touch with me um, because he said I was on the radar so they had heard of me I don't know if they'd seen me I, I know Jim Small went off to go to a few shop shows yeah. so I don't know if they'd seen me elsewhere um, but they could get in touch with me through James Drake so he messaged me and said John Bryan needs to get in touch with you about doing progress um, so I got in touch with him and then yeah, he just put me in I think I'm not sure if, um, at the time one of the referees would there was busy elsewhere on the day and he couldn't make the show. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like a substitute. Um, so it was just a one-off show last year, which was, you know, an incredible opportunity, again, to be thrown into. We just thought, in a few months, it's on Impact Rest, it's on Progress. You now, can this get any better? So was it the um, a- Atlas title match, was it, I think? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Zach Gibson and um, Trent Seven. Wow, what a match. <laughs> You'd think um, what a match, but I think it lasted 10 seconds, if that. It wasn't even 10. It was bang <laughs> on five. Wow. Glenn Joseph ran down the stairs with his phone in his hand to show that it had only gone for five seconds wow. exactly. It was shown to the camera. It was absolutely... Because I think originally the shortest progress title match was six seconds. Yeah. It was, uh, Matt Riddle, not Trent Seven, out in six seconds and People have wound him up for months about it, and then the fact he beat um, Gibson with a flying crossbody in five seconds. Oh, it's fantastic. Easy payday for me as well. Yeah, definitely. Is. <laughs> so, so it's probably your biggest match you've refereed so far, the gra- uh, WrestleGate match with Pack and Hangman? Yeah, well, <laughs> that was a surprise, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Hangman Page turning up at WrestleGate. That uh, was honestly. I didn't have a clue until probably about an hour before that happened. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there was a lot of guys in the audience who had been working on the earlier show during the day. I think it was an NGW show on the day. Um, 
even guys who've been on the wrestling show earlier on that evening and you know done the match and gone up to the front to watch I didn't have a clue because Hangman Page had turned up kind of so late for it wow um, so they were all fully you know only very very few people knew what was going on um, it was incredible uh, to have an opportunity like that you know essentially I mean people have said to me now it's, it was the first AEW match uh, AEW have said it's not no. <laughs> <laughs> but on TV when they mentioned like the Kip Sabian one of first things match which is pretty cool for Kip yeah um, but even so it's still a huge part of you know wrestling history in a way because it, it, technically in a way it was somewhat the first, it was the first AEW branded match they, they put it on um, their YouTube yeah. it's got like 700,000 views on wow. that which is just mind boggling to think that you know that many people have seen your referee that's amazing uh, um, yeah it's just it's just you know, I'm just a, a lad from Liverpool who wants to referee. And it's been his dream since he was like a kid. <laughs> and now, like, 700,000 people have seen me do it. So do you have to... Ch- yeah, but, do you ever have to change your refereeing style from promotion to promotion? Um, I'd say, yeah, to an extent, to be honest. Because if you go to the likes of Mr. Katz in uh, Warrington, yeah, and um, done them a few times, it's a very child-friendly, you know, bit of a silly style show there's a giant cat wrestling you know with <laughs> yeah. fairy shoes um, we had a, a, a Eamon Lee versus the cat in an unsanctioned back alley cat match where the wow. cat was getting distracted by balls of string and you know you kind of need to throw a little bit of sense of disbelief out the window there don't you yeah definitely to try and enjoy it. it it's still fun but then you can go to the likes of doing a match like Chris Ridgeway versus Timothy Thatcher where they're kicking seven hells out of each other wow. so you kind of got to be able to you know know when the serious moments are but when there's also comedy moments and depending on the kind of promotion you're working for definitely yeah, I mean know. if you go to the likes of um, Chad and Freud and Friends yeah where there's often matches with invisible men or inflatable men yeah. you know I think invisible you've got to try invisible man versus invisible stands one of my favourite matches of this year from, it was a game changer ah oh, Bryce Remsberg is yeah. <laughs> incredible I have no idea how they did table spot <laughs> I, I can't get my head around it at all <laughs> um, but no that that was that was an incredible feat by Bryce Ramsbury to get the whole, whole audience in on that and chanting with him and counting and stuff. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, I mean, like, for example... 15 minutes long uh, as well. You just watch it. Grabs a few months back. Yeah. Sorry? I was going to say, like, the match is like... I was going to say, I choose that grabs a few months back. Yeah. We had um, Chris Ridgeway versus... Oh, no, it wasn't. It was um, Drew Parker versus the Invisible Man in an I Quit match. Wow. I'll which Drew Parker won. <laughs> the Invisible Man said I quit. So, you know, just utterly madness. How? <laughs> did he say? <laughs> uh, it might be on YouTube or something, oh, or on okay. IPW On Demand, but it's definitely worth uh, well, I'll have to look <laughs> check, checking yeah. out. If I find it, I'll put it, I'll put it in the description <laughs> so people can look at it. Perfect, yeah. <laughs> so how do you handle a wrestler's injury if it's so bad that he can't, the wrestler can't continue? <laughs> Um, well, luckily, I've not had anything that severe. Um, there was quite a horrendous injury to pack at the last TNT show, uh, TNT Extreme Ooh, show. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Um, where he slipped on the um, yeah, did you see the, the the gash in his leg? Yes. Yeah. It's a couple of inches wide, a couple of inches deep. Um, but literally, he was in position to do a black arrow. He just went up top, finished the match there, and then finished up with the flash. But but uh, if he'd have carried on with that, I might. Might have had to stop because that was that was horrible. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw the picture. I saw he got strapped up um, double or nothing the other week, but it wasn't double or nothing. What it was called the um, last movie was the was all out. Yeah, all out. Yeah, that's one all out. Sorry. Um, but no, luckily I haven't had a chance. Well, I don't need to stop any matches through a severe injury yet. Um, I hope I don't need to. to Hopefully, everyone stays. Safe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, is there, is there anything you wish the public knew? Oh, sorry, how do I quit with this question? What do you wish the public would know about the role of referee that they don't? I don't know how, that, it's, <laughs> it's it's not as easy as people think it may be. Yeah. <laughs> um, see, like for example, you might see a wrestler come out and do a five minute match or ten minute match. But quite often on shows, there's only one referee. Yeah. So we're there 
needing to remember lots of things about the matches and maybe stipulations about matches. I might be there for eight or matches in a row. You know, we might be out for two hours, you know, with a very short interval time. Yeah. We might be out for like two, two and a half hours straight. You don't notice as much because we're always not the focal point, which is completely fine, but, you know, the, the, we've got to keep going sometimes, um, which a lot of people probably don't really think about. No, um, definitely. You know, we're, we're out there a lot more than the wrestlers. I understand the wrestlers' jobs are a lot more physically demanding than ours. Now they get thrown around and chopped into ring posts and things, which doesn't particularly appeal to me because <laughs> it would hurt. So I'll let them do it. Um, but no, it's, it's not just a case of counting to three and a count to five and a count to ten. Um, how, 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 in how much detail do you get told about the match? Do you get told certain spots have to happen about this time? I don't know how much I'm meant to be revealed on a podcast, you oh. see. <laughs> <laughs> Secrets of the business, not in the magic circle yet. <laughs> um, no, I, I'm usually I try to be aware of what certain points I need to know about in the match. Yeah. I won't necessarily know which time things need to be going in, but I'd like to be aware of if there might be some sort of interference or things I need to miss. Mm. Um, no, especially in like a tag team match, because you know, let's say there's going to be a tag team spot where they clearly cheat and no kick them down low. Well, yeah. I'm in the wrong position and I see that the match gets thrown out and everyone feels a bit cheated don't they mm-hmm. so I've got to make sure I'm aware of my own surroundings to make sure I'm in the right positions for certain things um, but yeah I mean uh, uh, I say refereeing is it's great I, I absolutely love it I wouldn't change the friends in the world um, but it is a little bit tricky than people think uh, uh, every kind of special guest referee I've ever spoke to as well yeah. No, I've wrestled as a special guest referee on the show. They always, every single one has come up to me after and said, I didn't realise how hard it was. I didn't realise how annoying it is when you're in the corner telling us, to like, so for example, I'm going to the corner, give them a five count because I choke on the ropes. Yeah. They don't realise how frustrating that is because <laughs> they don't listen. <laughs> but all these special guests go and say, they didn't listen to me. That's like, I know. They don't listen. You don't listen. <laughs> when you're in that position, they go, oh, I never realised. And it, they've all said it. It makes them respect the referee a lot more then. Yeah. Which is, which is great, to be honest. So, just do a referee gimmick at some point, just, just to uh, see what it's like. So, have you ever been in an incident during a match where the wrestler has turned into a shoot? Um, if so, what did you do to calm it down? Um, <laughs> not that I can think of. <laughs> um, no, it definitely has been relatively safe with me. Um, I've seen some matches where I thought they were just kicking the hell out of each other, but they're just like likes of Chris Ridgeway. He's just a hard lad, isn't he? Yeah. You no, know, Chris Ridgeway and uh, Luke Jacobs and um, Future Shock. See me, they just went all out on each other because they wanted to show what they can do, but they did it professionally and safely. So yeah, never would been in a shoot situation. Hopefully that doesn't happen. My name is Isaiah Quinn. And I am the guiding light. And you are listening to Broken But Glorious. Yeah, cool. So what advice would you give to somebody who's interested in becoming a referee? Um, if you want to become a referee, I would say get in touch with Chris Sharp because he's the man. He's going to tell you what exactly what you need to do. He's given me so much advice over the last two years and mentorship. Um... Especially now he's a WWE referee, you know, he's got all that extra knowledge wow. behind him. Uh, he does train in the Northwest, he does train the Pinfall Pro, I think, on Wednesdays and things like that. Um, he's just a fountain of knowledge. Fountain of knowledge. Um, but if you want to be a referee, get to a school because you do need to know how to bump safely, you need to know how to be in the right positions for things and how certain moves work. Um, and just go and help out at shows, make yourself known. Um, I know quite a lot of people kind of say, oh, I don't get booked on shows, don't get booked on shows, but they're not going out and helping out with the shows and getting them to pieces known. No. You know, I was going around for months at a time just going to help out shows to drag people down and things and, you know, I'll do camera work, I'll do the merch and things like that. Um, you know, I did uh, the sound at Future Shock for about six months. Wow. Um, yeah, you know, I was just behind the curtain. I had my gear with me every night just in case, but, no, they didn't need me and they needed someone to do the sound and uh, that was me. Um, so, you know, 
take all the other jobs, learn as much as you can and listen to other people and just take advice and, you know, we get there when it needs to be. We do need more referees because, you know, there, there's some absolutely fantastic referees, but, you know, they're all spread out around the country. Um, we need more around the country. Um, and plus, it stops me being the only referee on shows at times. <laughs> <laughs> if, we have, if we have two referees on the show, it makes things much easier for me. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so you've worked progress, worked impact. Are there any uh, promotions you've dreamed to work for? Oh, I'd like to work for, oh, well, I'd love to work for um, AEW or um, WWE, of course. Yeah. WWE is the goal, always has been since I was a kid. Um, but but AEW is a big player now. And, you know, referees, well, you see the referees, a lot of the WWE refs, in fact, you for Impact and Ring of Honor and stuff in the past as well. So it's not as if it's a case of, oh, you work for these people, you can't work for us. It's, um, I don't think so much for referees. No. Um, so just, I've always been told get as much opportunities and experience as I can, um, and so again, help you get better. So I'd love to work wherever where it'll have me. Really, I'd love to do somewhere international like OTT as well in Ireland. I know it's not completely international, but um, well, it is. Um, mm-hmm. But I'll do something like it, maybe somewhere in Ireland or Italy or Spain just to kind of get that kind of international feel. Yeah, and what, what's what's the ultimate goal in the end then? Finished the UK, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be that. That'd be the perfect job. Yeah, I could still work for WWE. I could still live at home, and um, that'd be great. But, but the, the ultimate, ultimate goal is to, um, I want to be out there every year at WrestleMania. You see the referees. All the referees take a picture together. Yes. On the right. WrestleMania stage. Yeah. Um, that's my goal. One day, I want. <laughs> I don't know what will happen. It's it's a it could be a pipe dream, but you never know. Um, I want one day to be on that stage at WrestleMania with all the referees, just getting that pre-show photo. Oh yeah, that, that's the plan. Yeah, <laughs> referee in the I keep calling it the NXT UK title, but it's not the WWE United Kingdom title. So that the oh yeah, you're right here. The WWE. Oh, United that'd be great. A oh, UK title match and at WrestleMania. Yeah, with me. Why not? Let's make it in Wembley. That'd be even better. We have to let's redo the Walter. Bait one, I got five point quarter stars or something. It's like the best match in WWE history, according to Dave Meltzer. All <laughs> oh, right, yeah, that's a good point, that yeah. So, um, where can the listeners see you in the near future? Oh, let's see. So, um, what I've got coming up is what um, trying to work out now. So, I've got Shad and Graps on the twenty fourth of September, but that sold out. Instantly, it sold out in, I think, 10 minutes. Wow. Um, and then they released an extra batch of tickets at 4 a.m., and they sold out as well. So that's a very hot ticket to get at the moment. Um, so you can't go to that. Sorry, listeners. Uh, <laughs> I've already got a ticket. Um, we've got Shadden Gaps. We've got um, a few shocker run through to the end of the year. They're on um, several times a month, usually, in Manchester. Uh, TNT, Cold Day in Hell. Um, I think it's October... Second or third, yes. So Thursday in Liverpool, uh, main event is going to be a ladder match with David Starr and Mark Haskins. Wow! I think Flamita and Bandido are coming. I'm not sure if their opponents have been announced yet for the night. You know that's going to be a really, really big show. And TNT Extreme, like always, knock out of the park. Um, so make sure you get advance tickets for that. Um, but we've got WrestleGate on October. The f- it's up the okay. So it's October third is TNT. Yeah. October 4th is GPW, October 5th is Wrestlegate and Frontline in Nottingham. Yes. And October 6th is Future Shock Tapped. Right. So that is a very, very busy four days. Yes, definitely. Four days, five shows. <laughs> <laughs> um, towards the end of, oh no, sorry, the start of November, um, November 3rd, Lucy Openshaw. Um, she's an announcer for Breathe and a few other companies. Yes, yeah. Um, and she does social media for Wrestle Travel and loads of other things. Um, she's absolutely fantastic. Uh, really good um, advocate for mental health. And she's running a charity show in Manchester um, to, uh, called Fight the Good Fight. Yes. And that's all raising money for mental health charities. So if they won't make their way down to that and support that. That'd be absolutely incredible. Yeah, I'm, hoping, I'm, I'm hoping to have her. Um... Fairfield Social Club. Maybe to have Lucy on to promote that in a couple of weeks. So. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, get her on. I'm sure she'll have to talk about it. Yeah, um, I, 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 
I tweeted it and she said she'll be up for it, but we haven't agreed on a date yet. So yeah, oh fantastic. Um, and Breed as well should hopefully be redoing their Star Cave show at um, some point in October as well, which would be great. Yeah, that's a good. So that got cancelled. So it looks, it looks oh, it looks me so too. Good. It's such a shame. Um, you know, but the circumstances were as they are at the time. Um, but everyone's been really supportive, which is fantastic. And you know, it's going to be an incredible show when I get down to it. Cool. So before we go, do you want to promote your social media? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I am J Greenwood Ref on Instagram and Twitter. Um, Instagram, I've got a thousand followers now, so I don't need any more than that. But Twitter, so <laughs> close to a thousand. I'll be happy with that. Like that's all I need. Yeah, a thousand. A thousand. It's, uh, it's, it's frustrating because it's so close, but so far, 